It isn't a movie primarily about high school. I mean, it's really about a guy going through a midlife crisis who happens to be a high school teacher. So it's more of like, gives you those thoughts about what do high school teachers do in their real life. Like, you don't imagine them like going home and having problems, but this is sort of what char uh, Matthew's character goes through, and it's really interesting. It is election week. So we, of course, yeah. thought that we should travel back in time to 1999 for Election, the movie that stars Reese Witherspoon and Matthew Broderick. Oh my goodness gracious. What did you think of this movie? You know what? I had never seen it. So this was my first time watching it. I had never even heard of it, to be honest. I, d I was like, when you showed this to me, I was like, what is this movie? And I watched it and I was so caught off guard because I was like, oh, it's like this wholesome election movie with Reese Witherspoon and Matthew Broderick. And it's, it's, it's not that wholesome. It's like a dark comedy and things go off the rails very quickly. We've seen Reese Witherspoon play so many type A characters throughout the course of her career. So this is like the ultimate type A, Tracy Flick. Looks like you could use a cupcake. She's going up against Chris Klein from American Pie. This movie, like, like I mentioned, I hadn't seen it or really heard of it. And I think the reason being it was a box office bomb. It grossed only 17.2 million against its budget of eight and a half to 25 million, but it ended up receiving critical acclaim. So it actually got an Oscar nomination for best adapted screenplay and a Golden Globe nomination for Reese Witherspoon for best actress. But it was almost a very, very different movie. So Alexander Payne actually told the Huffington Post that when it comes to who was almost cast for this movie, there were a lot of roles that Paramount was pushing for Mr. McAllister. And they said, why don't you get Tom Hanks or Tom Cruise? And the director was like, Nope, I want Matthew Broderick. <laughs> I want it's Ferris Bueller himself. Bueller. Ferris Bueller. When it comes to Tracy Flick, though, it was always Reese Witherspoon's role. She came in, guns blazing, blew everyone away in the audition process, and they were like, yes, this is this is on you. Because she actually looked at the director as soon as, as soon as she was done with the audition and said, I don't know who you're thinking for this part, but it's me. That's very Tracy Flick. <laughs> the character of Tammy, who's Chris Klein's little sister in the movie, it was actually originally Thora Birch from Hocus Pocus, and now and then she was cast in the role. And then they had a bit of a conflict on set after just three days of filming. So she was ousted, and then they brought in someone else. And actually, Reese Witherspoon was interested in this role as well. She told the LA Times that Tammy's epic speech, Who Cares About the Stupid Election, uh, made her want to play that role. Who cares about this stupid election? At the time, there was no such thing as like an R-rated teen film. They were all PG-13, they all had Freddie Prince Jr. And it wasn't until like a couple months later when American Pie came out that really got the ball rolling on having these like really inappropriate R-rating movies. But so, Election was the first. Let's, let's be clear about that. <laughs> Speaking of American Pie and Chris Klein, he had never acted before uh, this film and had actually turned down the role originally because of a certain scene that he thought would upset his grandmother. He said, I can't have my grandmother see me get some kind of explicit act that I'm just gonna stop right there, but you can make your own inference and it's probably correct. Election has inspired so many things since its premiere, most notably, Glee was so much inspired by Election. Ryan Murphy has explained that Rachel Berry is pretty much like a Tracy Flick 2.0. And you can totally see that now when you make that comparison. So there was there was actually an alternate ending to this dun, movie, dun, dun. which we love an alternate ending. So the alternate ending is faithful to the book. And in the book, Jim stays in Omaha and is hired as a used car salesman by one of his former students instead of moving to New York. And Tracy encounters Jim while looking to buy a car and the two settle their differences before she has him sign her yearbook. I kind of love the movie that they went, or the ending that they went with. Because if I had like seen this like happy, wholesome ending to this like really dark comedy, I would have been like, what just happened? Yeah, he's like so unnecessarily enraged by this like teenager. <laughs> I think 
it was fitting for the character, but I was also like, I like, I think a lot of people watch this, right? And they hate Tracy Flick, right? Like she's like annoying. I felt the opposite. I was like, I hate this teacher. This girl is in high school. Why are you so hell bent on like ruining her election? Who knew how high she would climb in life? How many people would suffer because of her? I had to stop her. Now. Everyone except Chris Klein sucks in this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everyone. Uh, but I love the fact that you had said, like, you know, everyone hated and still hates Tracy Flick. Because of that, Reese Witherspoon actually admitted that she had a lull in her career after election. Uh, she said that after she played this role, a lot of people didn't want to cast her because they thought that she would just play these like super intense type A movies. Luckily for Reese, Cruel Intentions also came out the same year and she had already filmed it. So that's kind of what sparked her career again. But if you're not a fan of Tracy Flick, you're not alone, because guess what? Reese Witherspoon hates her too. And here's what she told E.T. back on set. My character was so sort of bizarre and over the top. She's such a chronic overachiever that you know, I wasn't that motivated in high school. Well, that's gonna do it for this week's episode of Stream Queens, but Ash and I are dying to know what are your all-time favorite Thanksgiving TV episodes? Shell out your thoughts to us because then we could feature them on a future episode. Yes, and let us know your predictions for The Mandalorian season two, because that's my jam. Use the hashtag Stream Queens, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye, guys.